Hello Fast Trackers, my name is Rahul Ghazni and I am the director of Fast Track Training and we are the number one online training providers for the driving theory test. Today I've got a fantastic lesson for you. It's really something that we've been we've been wanting to get out for a long time. It's uh, instruction videos on how to pass uh, the driving theory test, but specifically on uh, alertness, uh, attitude and all the different sections that you'll find in the test. And in this presentation, I put together all the questions that I feel are really, really important for you to learn. Uh, they're the most common questions that come up um, during my time as a teacher, teaching students. Uh, and I'd love to share it with you and I'd love for you to watch. Um, so uh, get into a quiet room or bring the whole family into the room, it's your choice. Get a cup of tea, sit down on the sofa or on the bed or, you know, outside with your friends. Just relax uh, and let us get started straight away into getting you past your driving theory test. Before we begin, leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon because the next video will come out uh, shortly and you can just get it on your phone directly. Uh, if you subscribe, it just comes straight away to you. Um, and uh, the more you uh, um, watch these videos, the faster you're gonna pass your driving theory test, I guarantee it. Uh, you can also practice these questions on our website by visiting the link below. So without further ado, Fast Trackers, let's get started. Again, my name is Rahil and I'm gonna take you through the driving theory test. Okay, Fast Tracker, here's the first lesson. Um, car theory test section one for alertness. Let's get started. When making a U-turn, you should give an arm signal as well as using your indicators, signal so that other drivers can slow down for you, look over your shoulder for a final check or select a higher gear than normal. The correct answer, let's read it one more time uh, so we can slow it down as well. When attempting to make a U-turn, you should give an arm signal as well as using your indicators, signal so that other drivers can slow down for you, look over your shoulder for a final check, select a higher gear than normal. Well, the correct answer here is looking over your shoulder for a final check. Now, why, why do we select that answer? Well, there's only some, a few key words that you need to look for here. U-turn, look over your shoulder. So if you, you're gonna do a U-turn in the middle of the road, you wanna turn your body like a U as well, and you wanna go like that, like that. So you as well do a U-turn in your, in your body, in your neck. So you U-turn over your shoulder. And really, it's just these kind of key phrases, U-turn and shoulder for final check. These two you can link together. So you don't have to read the question. You're just looking for the key words. The answers in the driving theory test never change. Uh, the question is worded very differently, but the main answer, which is this one I've highlighted, never, ever, ever changes. It's exactly the same every time. This is, this is always the same when it comes to U-turns. What is a U-turn? If you see here, this car is uh, its a very lovely car um, and it's doing a U-turn uh, in the middle of the road. If you have any friends or family that are taxi drivers, show them this video and say, uh, what is a U-turn? And they'll laugh and they say, it's what I do every day. Uh, I, I'm a taxi driver, I do U-turns in the road every day. Um, and, and it's just, that's, that's a very natural maneuver for them. Okay, well done. Question number two. Before emerging from the road and turning right onto a dual carriageway, you should stop, apply the handbrake and then select a low gear, position your vehicle well to the left of the side road, check that the central reservation is wide enough for your vehicle or make sure that you leave enough room for a vehicle behind. Again, let's slow it down. Let's read the question twice and see if we understand it. Before emerging, emerging means when you're leaving the road. Uh, so when you're leaving the road and turning right onto a dual carriageway, dual carriageway is different from a motorway, dual carriageway is two lanes going up, two lanes coming down, motorway is, um, there's no central reservation on the motorway, you can only get on and off the motorway from the left hand side. We'll cover that a little bit later on. Uh, stop and apply the handbrake and then select a low gear. No, this is not good. <laughs> Stop and apply the handbrake and then select a low gear is very bad. You don't want to be doing those sorts of things because applying the handbrake, uh, you can't drive your car. Position your vehicle well to the left of the side road. It means just moving to the left of the center line. Not so bad. Check the central reservation is wide enough for your vehicle. I like this answer. Make sure you leave enough room for the vehicle behind. I like these two answers. These two are good answers, but if it's 
our dual carriageway its central reservation? Is it wide enough? That uh, that is the two key words that if you look at these two key words, I promise you it'll make the whole exam a lot easier for you when you come to this question. Dual carriageway, wide enough. No matter how they word this question or reword the question, they'll still have to use the term dual carriageway and they'll still have to use the term wide enough. So you, you, you basically, you don't have to read the question. Just look for these two key words. You're going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. You'll be driving by summertime. Right. Okay, so what is a central reservation? If you look here, it's picture time, guys. In picture time, we see that there is a central reservation here. There's two lanes on the right going this way, two lanes on the left going left uh, this way. You have a blue car and you have a brown car. Now, this car here has blocked the path because he didn't check if his vehicle was, uh, or if the central reservation was wide enough for him. So he's blocking traffic waiting to go. Um, if it was me and I was driving, I would drive left, go to the end of the road, take the roundabout and come back. Um, because I've got a trailer and I know that I'm going to be blocking the road. I'm not always the person that's right. Some people are really good drivers and they can see everything and they can go and, and they're very, very good drivers. Um, so just make sure that if you are a good driver that you check that your central reservation is is wide enough if he didn't have that trailer there his car would be fine because it's just it stops at the green the back of the green car and that trailer wouldn't be there so this is great that's not a problem it is dusk night time your lights should be switched on two answers are required um I've put two answers in here uh, because uh, I can explain more, but in your real exam, there'll only be one answer. So don't worry, in the real test, there's only one. It is dusk. Dusk means nighttime. Your lights should be switched on, and there are two answers required. Um, your lights should be switched on even when street lights are not lit, so others can see you, only when others have done so, only when street lights are lit. So it is dusk, nighttime. Your lights should be switched on. There are two answers required. Even when street lights are not lit, so others can see you. Only when others have done so. Only when the street lights are lit. Even when street lights are not lit. Lights and lit are pretty much the same word. Um, lights and lit is the same thing. Um, are they? Are they on? Basically, so others can see. This answer is my favorite answer. It's such a good answer. I want you guys to tattoo it on your back. Um, and <laughs> never forget it. So others can see you. Why is that the case? Because this comes in the test uh, for all the time that you're having the lights. Always use this answer. It's a fantastic answer. This is the greatest answer in the test. Uh, the first one is even when street lights are not lit, that's when you should use your lights. That's quite uh, normal. Dusk, nighttime, street lights are not lit, put your lights on, others can see you. Um, that's about it, guys. I mean, this, this we'll come across this question again and again and again. So we'll, we'll, don't worry, we'll, we'll come back to these uh, uh, questions. Okay, so here is a picture to explain to you how others can see you. So you see this man here. Okay, I'm just going to get my pointer. You see this man here in front of the back of this car, or in the back of this car. If this guy in the car, in the Mercedes, uh, didn't put on his light, then this man wouldn't be able to see him. So you're putting on the light so others can see you. As you can see, there are no street lights. So if there's no street lights, he's got to put on his lights. This light here, this white light, is called the dipped light. This light here, the blue light, is called the full beam headlight. Now, the full beam headlight is the brightest light and the dipped light is your normal light. Okay, let's keep going. Question number four. It is important to take what action when approaching traffic lights that have been green for a long time? Accelerate hard. Maintain your speed. Be ready to stop. Brake hard. So let's read that again. It is important to take what action when approaching traffic lights that have been green for a long time? Accelerate hard. Maintain your speed. Be ready to stop or brake hard. The correct answer Hmm. If the lights have been green for a long time, I would imagine it's going to turn red. If the lights turn red, what do you guys need to do? You need to be ready to stop. So there you go. 
Those are the two keywords you want to look for. Green for a long time. Okay, so it must turn red soon and be ready to stop. But let's see what that kind of looks like here. Okay, so I want to break down these lights for you. You've got your red, which means stop. You've got your red and amber together, which means stop. It's never meant prepare to go. Uh, no, it's never meant get ready to go. Amber never means get ready to go. Don't do that. It always means stop. Then you have green, which means go. It's clear. Then you have amber again, which means uh, stop. And then you have red, which means uh, stop. So it goes red, red and amber, green, orange, then red again. So red, red and amber, green, orange, red again. What do they call orange? This is another word they have for it. And I think it's amber. Yeah, amber. Um, so red, red and amber, green, amber, then red. I call it orange. Okay, so the last one, a lot of students always say to me, I'm confused as to what this means. It's okay, it's a confusing sign. Right, so let's, let's slice this um, uh, sign in the middle like a sandwich. Okay, so you get to have this delicious part of the sandwich on the right. Mm. And I get to have this delicious part of the sandwich on the left. This sandwich has a red tomato in it, which means stop, so you can't eat it. So I give you the other sandwich and I take this one, which has a slice of cheese and some lettuce or a cucumber. <laughs> I'm just joking. All right, so let's slice it in half. On the left hand side, it means no go. On the right hand side, when the sign, this, this here is for trams and this here is for traffic going right. So let's dissect this one, this delicious sandwich. Um, this is saying you can go if, this, if it's like that, it says go. But if it's like that, it means trams can't go. Trams can go, trams can't go. Trams can go, trams can't go. Now this sign on the right hand side is a green arrow and the green arrow means that if you're looking to turn right, you can turn right. So they're going to try and trick you in the exam. The way the questions work in the test is they'll just show you this picture and they'll say, uh, can you turn right? Yeah, I can because it says right. Uh, can trams go? Yeah, because it's straight. But if it's uh, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, if it's horizontal, then you can't go. Then they'll say, can you carry on straight ahead? No. That's it. So it's okay. You get you guys will get this. 100% you'll get this. Question number five. After traveling on the motorway for a long time, you feel sleepy. You should, two answers are required, leave the motorway and find a safe place to stop. Keep looking around at the surrounding landscape. Drive faster to complete your journey sooner. Ensure a supply of fresh air into your vehicle. Stop on the hard shoulder for a rest. Okay. So, after traveling on the motorway for a long time, you feel sleepy. Yes. So, it, there are two answers for this. But again, remembering your real test is only going to be one. But I'm adding in, for educational purposes, more answers to help, like, answer two or three questions that may come up, the variations. Um, leave the motorway and find a safe place to stop. Great answer. Lovely answer. If you're sleepy, get off the motorway. It, you, won't, you can take a nap and have a coffee. Keep looking at the surrounding landscape. No, that's not a good idea because you're taking your eyes off of the road. Uh, drive faster to complete your journey sooner. Uh, don't ever drive faster just so you can hurry up. Um, drive at 70 or drive at 60, but drive at the speed you can control your car. That's the rule. That's the safety rule. If you cannot control your car at 70 and you're too tired, go to 60. If you cannot control your car at 60, go to 55 or 50. If you can't control your car at 55 and 50 on the motorway, please leave the motorway and get some sleep and then get back on the motorway. Scientifically, you only need 20 minutes to have uh, the full uh, benefits of sleep. 20 minutes is all you need for a nap. So we call this a power nap. So don't worry if you get to your destination 20 minutes later. 20 minutes sleep will last you an extra four or five hours, which will get you to your destination comfortably. Understand the science behind um, driving and you, that's it. You'll know everything. Um, stop on the hard shoulder for a rest. Never stop on the hard shoulder for a rest. If you're sat there with a cup of tea and putting your feet to all you hear is Hello, hello, hello. What's all this then? Who's it? Are you having a cup of tea on the hard shoulder? No, 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 matey. Right, you're booked, mate. 
you're driving in the M25 in London, I suppose that's, that's probably what will sound like, hello, hello, hello. Yeah, don't do that. The police will stop you. Please go to the service station, service area, service, um, uh, you know, the services and get yourself a cup of coffee, um, have a drink of coffee, uh, take a nap for 20 minutes, then wake up. You'll feel super refreshed. You can get back on the road safely. So if you feel sleepy, leave the motorway, get some fresh air. Did I miss that one? I did miss that one. Ensure a supply of fresh air into your vehicle. I was too busy making uh, policeman noises from uh, Oliver Twist. Um, <laughs> so leave the motorway and find a safe place to stop. Ensure a supply of fresh air into your vehicle. So get some fresh air, roll down the window, let the air hit you. Uh, pretend you're in a music video, do this. <laughs> So, okay, so if you feel sleepy, leave the motorway and ensure a fresh supply of fresh air. Wonderful. Okay, so if we were to watch this man here, uh, as you can see, he is yawning uh, by the circumference of his mouth. He is very, very tired. You can also see he is a taxi driver by his taxi badge. You can also notice he is not wearing a seatbelt. Uh, these are three things that are very, very bad. Unless he's got a passenger in the taxi at the time, he doesn't need to wear a seatbelt. But I have a feeling that he's not wearing a seatbelt just because he's not wearing a seatbelt. So for you, don't be like this man. If you have a face like that, you need to go and take a rest and drink some coffee. If you're not wearing your seatbelt, you need to put your seatbelt on. And remember, don't put too many things in your um, mirror because it um, blocks your view. These are some things that I will cover a little bit later on for you. Okay, question number six. You should take care when moving off from behind parked cars. What actions should you take? Uh, three answers are required. Again, in your real exam, just one, one answer is needed, not three. Uh, this is for educational purposes only. Um, uh, look round before you move off, use all the mirrors on the vehicle, look round after moving off, use the exterior mirrors only, give a signal if necessary, give a signal after moving off. Okay, so um, let's read it one more time. You should take care when moving off from behind parked cars. What actions should you take? Look round before you move off. Use all the mirrors on the vehicle. Look round after moving off. Use the exterior mirrors only. Give a signal if necessary. Give a signal after moving off. Now, what's interesting about this is um, look round before you move off. Now this word before is really important because if you're moving, you want to check your mirrors before you move, not after, not after. So this one's out of the question. This one's out because it says after. So get rid of that. Get rid of that. Now you've got one, two, three, four, and you only need three. So this is the perfect one. Look round before you move off. Use all the mirrors on the vehicle. This is great. This is great. Use the exterior mirrors only. No. You see the word only is usually 99% wrong because it means that you only use one thing rather than looking around and using your eyes and your you know you check you know you're checking everything yeah 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 can i see everything can i can you know you're pointing at things like yeah 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 i can see over the shoulder remember the u turn u turn over the shoulder mirror check uh can i see to the end can i see to the back have i got my handbrake on check biting point these are things your driving instructor will tell you. Your driving instructor is going to have this wonderful amount of patience with you um, when teaching you these things. But if in your practice for theory, you can uh, see these things a little bit earlier, you can make your driving instructor's life a little bit easier. You'll know your driving instructor is really happy with you when their foot is not touching the pedals of the car and they tell you, look, I'm not doing anything. You're driving the car yourself. Um, you probably will get that probably like after 10 lessons maybe <laughs> so you'll have to practice practice until he feels more comfortable with you i think i, I believe um right uh so give a signal if necessary let's see what the answers are guys look round before you move off use all the mirrors on the vehicle and give a signal if necessary necessary means um, or the need or you have to it's 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 if you if you need to it's necessary need to necessary if you need to um, moving off from behind parked cars if you're moving off you need to check your mirrors before you move off check all the mirrors on the car give a signal so a signal like like for example um, if you look at this picture we can see here that the golf uh, which is in front of the red car behind the 
I forget the name, Mazda, I think it's called. The Mazda car. In front, I, I don't think I'm getting these car names right. Um, I think I think that might be a Golf as well. I think they're both Golfs. This car in the middle, do you see its wheel? Do you see where my red pointer is? The wheel is turned, which means it's getting ready to move off. This cyclist is, is cycling, but if this person doesn't check the mirrors... And or for example, they check the mirrors and they do a quick glance forward and then turn and then don't check the mirrors a second time. This bicyclist can creep up on them. If they don't signal, then then they're not going to be. This bicyclist won't see them and swerve a little bit further out. You could hit the bicyclist if you're not careful. You've got to do all these checks before you turn your wheel out. So let's go back to the question. Moving off from behind parked cars. Parked cars are here. You should. Look round before moving off. Look round before he moves, or uh, he or she moves. Use all the mirrors on the vehicle. Look at the mirror, look at the mirror, look at the mirror. Give a signal if necessary. Uh, signal on, and that's it. That's the perfect way to do it. All right, fast tracker, well done. All right, question number seven. When emerging from junctions, you must be careful due to one of the following obstructing your view. Windscreen pillars, steering wheel, interior mirror, or windscreen wipers. Now, this is one of my favorite questions because every student gets this wrong. They get confused. Um, and I'm not going to say anything just yet. Let me read it twice and I'll, I'll explain it a little bit more for you. When emerging from junctions, emerging means to... Um, uh, leave the road, like to get to, to move from the road. You must be careful due to one of the following obstructing your view. Windscreen pillars, obstructing means you can't see me. So it's a bit like John Cena, you can't see me. Um, obstructing. Windscreen pillars, which I'll show you a picture of in a second. Steering wheel, so your steering wheel is that wheel in the middle. Interior mirror, interior mirror is the mirror along the top. That's what we call the interior mirror and the side mirrors are, th are the ones on the side. Windscreen wipers are, you know when you, you, your uh, it rains and, you, and that wiper comes on? That's called a windscreen wiper. Um, so when emerging, coming out from a junction, a junction is just a side road. So when coming out of a side road, you must be careful due to one of the following obstructing someone's being John Cena on you. Uh, windscreen pillars, which is the pillar on the side. I'm going to show you a picture. Steering wheel, interior mirror, windscreen wipers. The correct answer is windscreen pillars. Emerging from junctions, you know what that means. Uh, leaving a road. Obstructing, meaning you can't see me. Windscreen pillar. What is a windscreen pillar? This is a windscreen pillar here. Uh, it connects the side of your passenger car to the main and your driver car to the main of your window, uh, your main windscreen window. And do you see the outline here? This is a, a, a pedestrian who uh, cannot be seen because of the windscreen pillar. Now, if you're leaving a road, you may see that children, motorcyclists and pedestrians can hide behind here. So you've got to kind of like take your body, like do this with yourself now. Sit up straight in your seat and then lean a little bit forward so that you can look around the uh, windscreen pillars before you're able to go. That's an important maneuver to do. And if you do that in your test, your driving test instructor will notice this and give you bonus marks. Um, in a sense that you, you, you're checking your mirrors, you're doing your points, your checks, you're checking around your windscreen pillars. It, it shows that you're alert driver. And the entire point of topic one is, are you alert? I am alert. 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 That type of behavior is needed. Um, and and in your exam, the, uh, another three questions will come up in your theory test, such as um, what is the, um, the, the, they'll say, what is the, um, the three people or the three um, uh, people that will get um, blocked by this uh, pedestrians children motorcyclists and there's a fourth one cyclists okay fast trackers let's keep going you have difficulty seeing behind when reversing you should open your window to look behind open the door to, and look behind look in the near side mirror ask someone to guide you the correct answer i'll read it one more time i, I keep i keep rushing it when i should slow down um, let me read it once more for you. You have difficulty seeing behind you when reversing. You should open your window to look behind, open the door and look behind, look in the near side mirror, ask someone to guide you. So you have difficulty seeing behind you when reversing. You should 
open your window and look behind? That's a good answer. I like that answer. That's a really important answer. So hold on to that. Open the door and look behind. That's also a good answer. Uh, these are the two things. You can take your seatbelt off when you're doing reverse maneuvers. So in your exam, when you are doing a reverse maneuver, you can take your seatbelt off. You can look around your shoulder. You can get out the car, look around. These are all things you're allowed to do because they don't want you hitting anybody when you're reversing. Use the near side mirror. Which one's the near side? So if you're a driver on the right hand side, driver mirror, near side mirror is that one. So yeah, you're probably going to be using that and this one anyway. So it's not an important answer. This is, this is not a good answer. Ask someone to guide you. Bingo. There you go. There you go. Well done. So when you're reversing, ask someone to guide you. Excellent. Very good. So you see this? The international sign for reverse your car. <laughs> so come on, reverse the car. That's what's happening there. Uh, so do you see this lady is looking out the window, she's reversing a car, she's asked someone to help. And that's what you should do. Don't try and reverse it yourself, ask for help. Question number nine. You're about to turn right at the end of the road and cannot see because of the parked vehicles. You should stop and then move forward slowly and carefully for a proper view. Move quickly to where you can see so you can only block traffic from one direction. Wait for a pedestrian to let you know when it is safe for you to emerge. Turn your vehicle around immediately and find another junction to use. Okay, so here uh, you want to turn right at the end of the road and you cannot see because of the parked vehicles. Um, so there's something called edging where you can edge your car forward, but we'll, we'll, we'll go through it slowly. Stop and then move forward slowly and carefully for a proper view. Now, this is a great answer because it's, it's using language slowly and carefully, which is what the DVSA um, uh, the DVSA, sorry, uh, the people who do the theory test, DVLA, I think I get confused between them, DVSA, I think, or DVLA, um, the, the people who do the theory test, they want you to do this, stop and then move forward slowly and carefully for a proper view, this is great language here, slowly, carefully, it's not fast and cutting in, that, that type of language you want to avoid, move quickly, avoid that, avoid that, avoid that, always avoid that, to where you can see uh, only block traffic from one direction. Bad, bad, bad answer. A lot of bad words in there. Wait for a pedestrian to let you know when it's safe for you to emerge. Now that's even worse. Now in real life, when you get your driving license, you, you see drivers using their hands and pulling people and say, yeah, 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 come, come, come. Yeah, yeah, go, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, th those people don't see, don't have a 360 view of all the other traffic around them. And if they say come, and the pedestrian goes, okay, thank you very much. And they start walking and they get hit by a car. Whose fault is it? Is it your fault for saying, come, 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 come? Is it the pedestrian's fault for going, yeah, 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 it's all right. And then walking and not looking and then getting hit by a car. Is it my fault for driving and hitting that pedestrian because they've walked into the road? Whose fault is it? There's no real, I mean, a lot of students answer and they say it's my fault, it's the pedestrian's fault, it's someone's fault. It's, the main person is the one who's using the hand signal. Don't ever use your hands to tell other pedestrians what to do. That's completely wrong. And in fact, in your exam, that will get you failed. Uh, if you start using your hand signals to tell drivers, uh, pedestrians to come, the driving instructor or uh, the driving examiner will look at you like you're crazy. He'll say, park the car up, take the key out of the ignition. We're going to walk back to the center. Um, it's the most embarrassing thing you can do, but it's designed to explain to you the importance of not using your hands. Um, after you pass your test, uh, you can do whatever you like, but during the theory time, you shouldn't use your hands. And I say you should do whatever you like. You, you shouldn't. You should drive slow, avoid using your hands and keep both hands on the steering wheel. And if that's too difficult, you can't keep both hands on the steering wheel, then put both hands under your bum and drive that way. It's much safer. All right, guys. So wait for the pedestrian to let you know when it's safe for you to emerge. No, don't make eye contact with the pedestrian. Just keep your t hands on the steering wheel and let them make their own decisions. Turn your vehicle around immediately and find another junction to use. No, that's, that's not how we want to drive our car. We need to use this road and we don't need to go back. It will just cause more uh, longer journey time. We don't want a longer journey time. The correct answer is stop and then move forward slowly. Great language here. You cannot see, there are parked cars, move forward slowly. 
these key words never change in the exam, at least not from what I've seen over the last 10 years I've been teaching. Um, the template, you know, it's been a long, long time and, and I always see this language, always, all the time. This is the same language in the test. It doesn't change. Um, so always move forward slowly, carefully, proper view, cannot see parked vehicles. So what does that look like in real life? So imagine this car has moving slowly forward to get a proper view. Uh, and then you've got to give way for them. You see this, the line here, the motorcycle. It's, it's a little dangerous if you don't do it slowly. This driver looks like he may have done it quickly. It quickly is going to scare the other drivers. And if you scare the other drivers, you fail your driving test. So please make sure the body language of your car is one of peace and tranquility. <laughs> uh, relaxed body language of your car. Don't drive too quickly. Just slow it down, okay? All right, you should avoid overtaking when just after a bend in a one-way street on a 30 mile per hour road or approaching a dip in the road. Um, you should avoid overtaking. Overtaking is when you go uh, past the car. Just after a bend in a one-way street on a 30 mile per hour road or approaching a dip in the road. Uh, the correct answer is approaching a dip in the road. You should avoid overtaking. Why? What is a dip? This is a dip. A dip is when the road uh, goes down and then comes back up. So that's called a dip. Now, if you notice, if I was to begin my um, my uh, overtaking maneuver at this stage, I cannot see what is happening on the other side of the road. Um, because I cannot see what's happening on the other side of the road, this is a very bad position to choose for my overtaking. In fact, the better position is to wait and go slightly further along when the dip goes kind of down and I can see more. Uh, because imagine if I did overtake at this point and another car was coming from the other side, bang, this is going to be bad times for everyone, especially for that driver. They weren't expecting you to come and uh, overtake at the top of the hill. You've got to wait so you can see, uh, so you can see what's happening. Question number 11, when should you avoid ha uh, having objects hanging from your interior mirror? Um, your windscreen could mist up more easily, your radio reception might be affected, your view could be obstructed, your sun visor might get tangled. So um, when should you avoid having objects hanging from your interior mirror? Your windscreen could mist up more, your radio reception might be affected, your view could be obstructed. Very simply, it's view obstructed. Obstructed means you cannot see um you know nazane out there you cannot see you cannot see that's obstructed john cena <laughs> okay you can't see me okay john cena that's obstructed so objects hanging from your interior mirror means it's obstructed so things like this things like what that yawning man was doing uh, uh sat nav is going to block your view so these, these are very important not to block your view Question number 12, when you see a hazard ahead and are preparing to slow down, why is it important to check your mirrors first? Because you'll need to accelerate out of danger to assess how your actions will affect the traffic behind because you'll need to brake sharply to a stop, uh, poor judgment of speed to check what's happening on the road ahead. Okay, so question number 12, uh, when you see a hazard ahead and are preparing to slow down, why is it important to check your mirrors? Um, alertness really so you can see how your actions are affecting people behind you because you'll need to accelerate out of danger look you're not fast and furious i don't care what you say you're not robbing a bank you don't need to get into that uh, mini and start um uh, doing the italian job you don't need to accelerate out of danger please understand these are bad answers and don't use them okay so the first one we're going to throw in the bin that's a bad answer to assess how your actions affect the traffic behind. Fantastic, great answer, brilliant answer. I want you to also tattoo this on your back because this is a great answer. This is, this is a fantastic, this is a golden answer. If you use this answer all the time in your test, you'll always pass because you'll need to brake sharply and stop, poor judgment of speed to check what's happening on the road ahead. Okay, the correct answer is uh, how your actions will affect the traffic behind. Uh, so you see a hazard, you slow down, you check your mirrors to see how it affects the traffic behind. Do you see how these key words is what you need to learn? When you come across this in your exam, a lot of students panic and they say, oh, there's a lot of answers. No, just focus on these key words. I promise you guys, you're going to just enjoy the exam a lot more if you do this way. 
This way is better. Just look for the keywords. You don't have to read the in-between and just pick the, the, you know what I mean? It doesn't change. It's never really changed. It's been the same for years and years. And this is the secrets, okay? So mirror, check, then slow down. Best thing to do, okay? All right, question number 13. What is the main problem with using a hands-free phone Bluetooth when driving? It will divert your attention. It will reduce your view. It will increase your concentration. It will improve your safety. The correct answer is, um, I'll read it one more time actually before I give the correct answer. I always speed up. What is the main problem with using a hands-free phone Bluetooth when driving? It will divert your attention. It will reduce your view. It will increase your concentration. It will improve your safety. The correct answer is it will divert your attention. So hands-free phone will divert your attention. Now, I love the, 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 the connections that some of the students make in the in training room when we're training students. They say hands-free phone, divert your call. Hands-free phone, divert your attention. Like, a, you know, when on the phone, when you're calling someone, you divert the call. This is the same thing. It's great, isn't it? So you can remember that in the test. So if you look at this picture, this lady is using her phone in her hand, which is a big no-no. You shouldn't use the phone in your hand. Um, and you should put it into the um, uh, glove compartment. Or we can call it the phone compartment now because no one drives with gloves and um, unless you're really posh. Um, but no one really drives with gloves. So they put it into the phone compartment and leave it in there. And don't answer your phone. It's not like you're getting a million pound deal uh, text message in the next time when you're driving. Just leave it there. Uh, and in cases of emergency, park the car, please, and take the key out of the the um, the uh, ignition and put it onto the dashboard uh, or onto the top of the car and just leave it there. So, you know, if you get a police officer that comes along and goes, Hello, 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 I think I've seen you on a hard shoulder somewhere, matey. What are you doing out here? <laughs> Sounds Australian. Um, he says, sorry, mate, I'm just on the phone. He says, yeah, but you're in a car. He says, yeah, but my ignition uh, and key is, is, is off and my keys are on top of the dashboard. He says, all right then, matey, you know what you're doing. You must have attended a fast track course. He says, yes, I did. And I passed my test. <laughs> Characters. Right, okay, question 14. What is the meaning of a blind spot? An area covered by your left-hand mirror, an area not covered by your headlights, uh, use the exterior mirrors only, an area covered by your right hand mirror. Okay, uh, so again, what is the meaning of blind spot? An area covered by your left hand mirror, an area not covered by your headlights, use the exterior mirror only, an area covered by your right hand mirror. So blind spot is an area not covered by any mirrors. So like if you're driving a car, there is a blind spot behind you, which is why you do the U-turn to check that blind spot because that's a part where the mirrors don't catch. That's called a blind spot. So what is a blind spot? You can't see me. You're not alert to you're not alert to a visibility, visible, meaning visually, visual, visible. Visual, visible, blind spot. So I'm blind. I cannot see because I have to turn around and then I can see. So again, if we use the example here of a blind spot, he should check over his shoulder to see the cyclist coming because if you see the mirrors here are not able to uh, see him. So the mirrors are kind of pointing inwards because uh, he hasn't pushed them out. So he can't utilize his mirrors to full effect uh, because it's not, it's not in the correct position. He cannot see him. So he must, um, uh, he or she, it might be a she, um, uh, he or she inside the car can look around at, at this person here. Question 15. How should you use a satellite navigation sat-nav when driving a car? Only set the destination when you're lost, set it before starting your journey, turn it off while you're driving in built-up areas, choose a voice that you find calming. Hmm. So how should you use a satellite navigation sat-nav when driving a car? Only set the destination when you're lost, uh, set it before starting the journey, turn it off before you're driving in built-up areas, choose a voice that you find calming. I like the prodigy voice uh, when I'm driving. Turn left here. I lied. It's drum and bass. What you gonna do? Um, <laughs> so that's not the right answer. Get rid of that last one. It's not the right answer. Um, um, do you remember earlier in this uh, lesson I was telling you guys about uh, before you set off, before you get in the car, 
before you uh, do anything. Now that language still persists here and we can see a benefit for it here. Set it before starting your journey is the correct answer. How do you use sat nav? Before you get in your car. Why? Because you don't want to be doing this. You don't want to be touching your sat nav when you're driving because the police can also stop you for touching your sat nav. Um, they can also stop you for uh, one other thing which I want to show you guys. You know if you've got some like headphones and you've got your headphones in your ear like uh, this, right? So this is, your, you've got your headphones, it's coming down here, you've plugged it into your phone and you think, you know, this is fine, this is technically a hands-free kit. Most people don't have it like this, they've got those new, um, uh, very uh, uh, um, the Bluetooth ones, the, the, the wireless ones. But if you are using this and you happen to touch the volume like that when you're driving, that can also get you in trouble with the police. They'll say you were, you were touching your phone, that's the same as touching your phone. Uh, I've seen people um, who, who have had that happen to them. Uh, touching your sat-nav, same thing. Touching your phone, same thing. Okay, question number 16. The windscreen pillar can restrict your view at junctions. Which vehicle should you be looking out for? Coaches, motorcycles, buses and lorries. Now, I'm not going to say anything. Because you've already seen this before. So, it is motorcycles. So, the windscreen pillar can restrict your view at junctions. Uh, for motorcycles. Well, we said it before and you understand it now and again we've repeated the same question it's just been worded differently. So this is the windscreen pillar. You should also keep a safe distance behind a large vehicle because you'll be able to corner more quickly, you'll help the large vehicle to stop more easily, you'll keep out of the wind better, you'll give the driver a chance to see you in the mirrors. Uh, so you should also keep a safe distance behind a large vehicle because you'll be able to corner more quickly, you'll help the large vehicle to stop more easily, you'll keep out of the wind better, you'll give the driver a better chance to see you in their mirrors. The correct answer is the last one. You'll give the driver a chance to see you in the mirrors. Now, safe distance behind a large vehicle. What is a large vehicle? This is a large vehicle. And if this large vehicle here cannot see you can if you as a driver the green car cannot see the mirrors then that lorry cannot see you and when you drive closer and you're positioned here and then you overtake you're going to scare the lorry don't go oh my god where did he come from but if you position from here where you can see his mirrors and his mirrors can see you and then overtake it's much better so going back to the question you'll give the driver a better chance to see you in the mirrors safe distance behind a large vehicle you must avoid overtaking when just after a bend again this is the one question that students get wrong. This is the repeated question I mentioned to you. Uh, I always like to add one or two questions again to see if you remembered. Uh, you must avoid overtaking just after a bend in a one-way street on a 30 mile per hour road or approaching a dip in the road. Again, you guys know this. Approaching a dip in the road. Well done. So here it is again. You guys remember that? Well done to you for remembering. Okay, next question. When the sun goes down, uh, you should switch your headlights on. Why? To make your dials easy, easier to see, so that you blend in with other drivers, so others can see you more easily because the street lights are lit. Um, so again, it's the same variation of that question, but it's worded differently. But do you notice now, guys, uh, fast trackers, that the, 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 the answers never change? The key answers never change, and the question is always the same. Uh, no, questions change, Answer variations may change, but the keywords never change and the keywords in the uh, questions never change. That's the secret. When the sun goes down, uh, you should switch your headlights on. Why? To make your dials easier to see so that you blend in with other drivers so that others can see you more easily because the street lights are lit. The correct answer is so others can see you more easily. To switch your headlights on so others can see you more easily. Well done, good job. So always make sure you've got your headlights switched on because if you've got it off, it's very difficult uh, to be seen. Okay, last question for today, guys. So keep it up, I'm very proud of you. You have to stop your vehicle in an emergency on a wet road. What should you do? Apply your parking brake, apply the parking brake and foot brake together, give an arm signal, select a reverse gear, keep both hands on the steering wheel. Let's slow it down. Let's read it again. You have to stop your vehicle in an emergency on a wet road. What should you do? Apply the parking brake and foot brake together. 
give an arm signal, select a reverse gear, keep both hands on the steering wheel. If you, on a wet road, apply the parking brake and the handbrake together, your car is gonna go It's gonna be like Fast and Furious and you're gonna spin out of control. Not in a good way, Fast and Furious. I'm talking about the villains in the back that uh, usually flip their car because they don't know how to drive like Vin Diesel. You don't wanna drive like Fast and Furious. Forget about that, That's, don't do that. Never do that. Please drive below the speed limit. Give an arm signal if necessary. Giving an arm signal is, a, is, is not the best way to stop in an emergency. Select a reverse gear is not the best way to stop in an emergency. Keep both of your hands on the steering wheel to control the car. And we're gonna talk about car control in the later videos and later lessons, but this is what you wanna to do to control the car. So if there's an emergency on a wet road, keep both hands on the steering wheel to control the car. All right like this like if the car was skidding out of control here then keep both hands on the steering wheel all right well done fast trackers well done you did the first lesson good job all right fast trackers so you've done the first lesson you've seen all the ways that a teacher would want you to go through the um driving theory test now that you know this is the level that we expect from you and if you were to join one of our fast track classes uh, we'll be able to show you all of these things and there's so many lessons there's so many questions and usually we get students pass very very quickly uh, there's a link in the description below with a telephone number if you wanted to whatsapp a teacher uh, you can whatsapp myself uh, if you wanted to talk about your driving theory test you can go and uh, come in for a free assessment to speak to a teacher online there's a link to our website you can even practice these questions on our website and there's a full course uh, which has everything in it and you can you can go and enroll on one of those which is wonderful and we we you we get you past like very very quickly very friendly teachers and uh, uh, we get it sorted for you uh, but that's all that we have time for today again my name is Rahul Ghazni I'm the director of fast track training uh, leave a like subscribe and click the bell icon why because if you do that, the next video that comes out, you'll get it on your phone. You can just watch it straight away. Um, and I personally think that the, the nicest thing is if you do want to pass quickly, you should get involved with different channels that have like uh, videos like this so that you can get the right information. Now, this stuff is exactly what's going to be on your test. So don't worry. Everything's going to be fine and you're going to pass straight away. So thank you, Fast Trackers, and we'll see you in the next episode of the Driving Theory Test Training. Take care.